ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय During our Shravan Kirtan camp, one uh, old woman was attending, and she said to me, "Via you," because she said to me, "Via you," you were translating. She spoke in Telugu, which I don't understand. Uh, that she desired to merge into the lotus feet of the Lord. which to some people might sound very devotional but to those who have studied Srila Prabhupada's books and heard Srila Prabhupada's message can understand that this is an impersonal idea it's not true bhakti but something of bhakti is there I mean, she herself probably thinks that it's devotion and she she has some attraction to bhakti she came to our program so she has some attraction to bhakti and to devotees but it's not in the pure devotional line uh, there are many examples of people who are attracted to devotional service for uh, ulterior reasons as you Well, Srila Prabhupada would speak of ulterior motives. That means that they look like they they're coming for bhakti. Bhakti means to serve the Lord, but they have some other desire which they they don't show very prominently, or in some cases they do. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "Chatur vidha bhajante mangjana sukriti na orjana." Artho jignasur artharti gyani cha bharata shabha. Four kinds of pious people begin to worship me, Krishna says. The distressed, the desire of wealth, the curious, and the person in knowledge. And Krishna says, Udara sarva evaite gyani twat maiva meimatam. He says that the, oh, they're all good, these people, but the best is the gyani. Gyani here means Gyanavan. What is that? Bahunam Janma Ramante Gyanavan Mamprapadite Basudeva Sarva Miti Samahatma Sudurlava. One who, after many lives of cultivating uh, a search for the truth, finally comes to understand that the truth is Krishna, and therefore surrenders to Him. Whereas others have some other motive. Uh, they're distressed. They, they're praying to Krishna, help me. I'm distressed. I want money. These two categories these two categories uh, often overlap and the curious someone who's they have some attraction to krishna they they're, they're not really interested in in the beginning in surrendering to krishna but they have some attraction or they want to find out what it's all about often in the western countries when we have festivals or do hainam sankirtan or sometimes when A devotee is just walking around the street doing something, going to purchase something or whatever. If they're dressed in devotee clothes, <laughs> then people know there's something different. Then they may come up. People may come up and ask, "Hey, what what's this all about? Anyway, what are you doing?" So that's a curiosity. So they they have some attraction to Krishna, even though in the beginning their attraction is. that what can i get from krishna but if particularly when they start to accept that krishna is superior to me krishna can help me a distressed person approaches krishna give me some help then that is even though not in a completely a long way from being a, a pure motive it's the beginning of bhakti because they have uh accepted the principle of subordination not the principle of surrender 
or there may be artificial surrender that, that uh, I just like we find the even the demons they would sometimes perform great austerities to supplicate a demigod but that was the idea that was time serving Srila Prabhupada calls that I believe he got that term from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati time serving devotion you do it until you get the result and then you forget just like in the in the Hindu system you have a temporary puja you, have, you call Ganesh you make a deity of Ganesh and then when you when the puja is over you throw him in the sea in Bombay in the river somewhere else time serving devotion <coughs> or people they uh, they make a vow to Tirupati Balaji and then they get their vow fulfilled and then they go there and shave their head or whatever when the, they say if you fulfill my desire I'll, the women especially they'll shave their head which is a big sacrifice for women uh, and, they, and then they do it and then that's it okay deal finished as you see you, just like you sell a house to someone you take the money and then you don't you don't need to have anything more to do with that person you, you've done your bit he's done his bit and it's all finished However, the fact is that Krishna is attractive and <coughs> by approaching him people do become attracted and if they get something from him they may want more also. They go, well, Krishna arranged this, he can arrange something more. It's a good deal. And they, by doing so they may come in contact with Krishna through his uh, devotees who preach. Real devotees don't preach that Krishna will help you in this way and that way. They may do as occasionally, but their the main thrust is surrender to Krishna. Hear Krishna's instructions in Bhagavad Gita. There's no happiness in this material world. Surrender to Krishna. So by hearing that, people may uh, gradually become purified. Another factor is that once people get an attraction to hearing about Krishna, well, they, they become attracted to Krishna because hearing about Krishna is very pleasing. Satam prasangam amavirya sangado bhavanti hrit karna rasayana kata. No, that's not the verse. Anyway, this is a good verse. Tadjoshana dashva pavargavatmane shadharatir bhaktir anukramishati. Hearing about Krishna in the association of devotees, hearing about his glories, ah, uh, that is very soothing or pleasing to the ear and the heart and one advances on the path of liberation by doing so and gradually one develops faith in Krishna then attraction to Krishna and ultimately actual bhakti to Krishna. So, uh, hearing about Krishna and Rama especially these two avatars, is central to Indian culture. I said Krishna avatar, well, he's also, in one sense, an avatar. Yes, he's an avatar. He's avatari and he's avatar, both. So, uh, and other, in, in some parts, uh, Nushimha also, north of here and in south, Orissa, Many people, they are specifically devotees of Nushimha. So, uh, hearing about the Lord, even from non-devotees, some attraction is there. Just like we have the, the uh, North India, the, the religious culture over the last several centuries in the Hindi-speaking area, what can broadly be called the Hindi-speaking area, although there are hundreds of languages spoken in that area, uh, that has two, a, a very major influence in the religious culture of North India over the last few hundred years has been Ram Charit Manas. And although people do not get a pure conception of worship of Ram from that. Generally people come out with an impersonal idea. Now that may, that's maybe partially due to the author or maybe partially due to the 
uh, Ramanandi Sampradaya, which has come up, which uh, focuses on that. But that kind of idea would be there, that you worship Ram and then ultimately you merge into the lotus feet of Ram, something like that. So that's not pure devotion, that's jnana mishra bhakti. But you can't, you can't say there's no devotion, there's, there's a feeling of it. Yeah. There's something there. It, 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 attraction to Rama is there. I'm told there's regularly on the television in in Telugu, there's a speaker who is a complete smarter Mayavadi type who speaks on Ram Lila. But it's uh, so attractive that even many Muslims watch it, want to speak of Hindus. So some attraction is there. When this Ramayan TV serial came out in the 1980s, there's, the whole of India just stopped for one hour or whatever it was because everyone was watching it and it was so popular. Uh, so the very nature of Ram and Krishna is attractive and so people become attracted. They may... Yeah, but what is that attraction? That is... Bhakti ras, although it may not be pure bhakti ras, that may be karma mishra bhakti ras or jnana mishra bhakti ras, but still uh, bhakti ras is there. Karma mishra bhakti ras means there's a feeling of love for Rama, but wanting material benefit from him. <coughs> or jnana mishra bhakti ras. A feeling of attraction to Rama and Krishna, but uh, expecting to merge into, into him, not with the ultimate aim of serving him and surrendering to him. But there's, uh, there's an improper, improper understanding. But something is there. Just like if we preach about bhakti. In India, in general, people, even though people have a misunderstanding of that term, because the, what they take to be bhakti is karma mishra bhakti or jnana mishra bhakti, uh, but at least they have some idea of what it is. If we if we speak about Krishna and bhakti in non-Hindu cultures, in the West, for instance, you really have to start with ABC. I mean, the bhakti... Often Srila Prabhupada wouldn't even speak of bhakti when he spoke of people. They just try to get them to understand that you're not the body. The body is temporary and the soul is eternal. The first teachings of Bhagavad Gita. So, it's a mixed bag. On one hand, uh, people who represent Krishna as a product of the impersonal absolute. Well, if they speak about Krishna, then we're, we're told, Avaishnava mokhod girnam putam harikatam ritam shravana naiva kartavya sarpo cheshtam yathapaya. Not to hear such people, because it's like hearing the nectar of Krishna kata from such people is compared with drinking milk which has been uh, touched by the lips of a poisonous snake. You'll be poisoned by it. You won't be benefited by it. <coughs> so, that's a, that's a very strong one, isn't it? Uh, so, should we hear or shouldn't we hear? No, we shouldn't hear. We shouldn't hear from people who have mixed perceptions. But there are degrees also. I mean, some some speakers on Ram Leela and Krishna Leela, they speak the Leela, but they're actually demons. Because they, they'll say things like, that after speaking, they'll, they'll emphasize the point that, that ultimately uh, Krishna, there's no such person as Krishna or such a thing. Uh, 
I remember once I was having an argument with someone in Hubli because he uh, he started telling me Hubli in Karnataka. This was many years ago. He started telling me about all what he's do what he's doing for helping the poor and this and that and and I said, well, what's the use? Ultimately, I mean, you may be very proud of that, but but what's the use? You have to help them spiritually. And then he gradually became more angry. And uh, and then in the middle, uh, I, I, I said, because he was supposed to be a worshiper of Narayana, and I said, well, look, Narayana says in Bhagavad Gita. And then he came out with, well, Narayana, he's ultimately Nirakari. You know, just like to, you know, just complete, his so-called worship of Narayana was shown to be completely envious, actually, because when he's brought to the point <coughs> of that you have to accept what he says, then he just tries to uh, wash Narayana out of existence. That, well, he, he doesn't have any form, he's not really a person, so you don't have to bother what he says. That was the, that was the, uh, implication of his statement, just completely envious, actually. Even though he was doing puja to Narayan every day. So, uh, people do <coughs> get bhakti ras, but, or you could say a perverted reflection of bhakti ras. By hearing from people who do not have a clear conception <coughs> of what bhakti is. So, there's something there. We can say people do feel attraction. Because again, Rama and Krishna, they are attractive. Hearing about Rama, how Dasharath loves him so much, uh, that he's, Dasharath just dies <laughs> out of separation from Rama, and how Bharat is so much attached, and Lakshman is so attached, and the love between Sita and Ram. These are fully transcendental topics. The very nature of Rama is uh, Ramante Yogino Nante Satyananda Chiratmani Iti Rama Padena So Parang Brahma Vidhiyate He is the Supreme Truth who the yogis, the persons on the transcendental platform are aspiring for that. They take pleasure in him, he is uh, true bliss and completely spiritual. So his very nature is that he is attractive. Rama, Krishna, Narsimha, these are all forms of the Supreme Lord. They are attractive. So people do become attracted to them and there is some bhakti rasta, but it's mixed up. And people... Uh, unless they are, unless they come in association with pure devotees who know the difference, then they don't get to understand the difference. And they it just, they're doing bhakti, but they're not really going anywhere. They're not making advancement in bhakti, because actual bhakti means anya bhila ashita shunyam jnana kama jnana vitam anuku yena krishna nushilanam bhakti rutama. Real bhakti means in which there's no personal desire for anything material or even for uh, <coughs> merging into the existence of the Lord. That idea sh shouldn't be there. If that idea is there, then it's not really bhakti at, at all. Or, the, or the, the spirit of bhakti is perverted or uh, not going in the proper direction or not properly fructifying. So, uh, it's really the duty of our devotees, as all our acharyas have done, to preach this Shuddha Bhakti. Shuddha Bhakti. Yeah, Shuddha Bhakti. The pure devotion to Krishna. We can expect that if we promote mixed bhakti, that we may get many more people coming. Just like although we don't consider it to be so, in general estimation, uh, bhakti movements in India include the followers of Amma and Asharam Bapu, and you probably don't know about all these people over here. Uh, Amma, maybe she's from the south. But 
Ashram is going to be popular here. Sai Baba, all this kind of thing. It's all included in, in bhakti, in the general estimation. But bhakti means for Krishna. No one else is the proper uh, vishay, the proper subject of bhakti. Now there may be guru bhakti, that's also there. But only when it's seen that the guru is in relationship to Krishna. Otherwise such a person is not worthy to be a guru anyway. But like this... Uh, Asharam, Amma, all this kind of thing. It's just based on the person, not on Krishna. It's not, they're not worshipping the Guru because they're representative of Krishna, but they think that the Guru is God himself, just like they have Prakat Brahma Swarup, who no one ever out of Gujarat ever heard of. But they, they consider him to be directly God, which is a great mistake. It's very sinful to do so, actually. So, uh, this movement should be for preaching pure devotion. Otherwise, we can get many people. If we tell them that uh, we make personality cults based around the guru, we may say, well, we're worshipping Prabhupada. But Prabhupada always directed people toward Krishna, and that's why we worship him. Because he gave Krishna. Prabhupada never... He didn't, he didn't make the International Society for Prabhupada Consciousness, for Krishna Consciousness. And although among his disciples, uh, he taught them to worship him, that's proper, but uh, he didn't promote himself to the public, that people should know me. He promoted Krishna. So, uh, yeah, we may get many followers if we preach a, a mixed form, just like you know, ashram and all these things. If you say you were, you can worship all different demigods and do welfare work and all this social work, and people like it because they're in Maya and they they believe in the possibility of enjoying this material world, and they think that the role of God and the role of gurus is to help you enjoy this material world in a good way. what they call a good way. So we can spread very widely, but then what is the benefit? Just like the Ramananda Sampradaya is spread very widely. Yeah, there's some benefit, but no one gets the actual benefit of pure devotion because they have no idea what it is. That's why uh, Srila Prabhupada would sometimes quote, Ekas Chandras Tamohanti King Natara Gano Picha One moon is better than millions of stars. Okay. Prabhupada said, echoing his own Guru Maharaj, that if he could make one pure devotee, he would consider his mission successful. So there is some bhakti ras, you could say, in, even in, uh, if it's directed toward Krishna and Rama, then in hearing Ram Charit Marnas, or there must be some Telugu version of Ramayana, also I'm not very familiar with that. In Bengal they have Kriti Vas, he made the Bengali Ramayana, which isn't very well known or very popular. Gita Press is trying to popularize it right now. Ram Bhakti is not a big thing in Bengal. Then in uh, Tamil Nadu, that uh, Kamban Ramayana, is there. there are different editions. But <coughs> we always emphasize Valmiki Ramayana as the actual edition. Other people, they may have they may be definitely inspired by Lord Ram. It's not that they were they weren't writing their editions of the Ramayana in the local languages so that they could make a living, like you know, writing some cartoon script or something. They but whether or not they had a pure conception is questionable, or even if they did, the the tradition that has come up around them has not been pure. So this pure devotion it's very Precious, the pure bhakti ras, as we find in bhakti rasamrita sindhu, the, the pure bhakti ras, that should be propagated, not this mixed form. Bhukti mukti spriha yavat pishachi hridi vartate tavat bhakti sukhasyatra katam abhyudayo bhavet. As long as there are desires within the heart for material enjoyment or liberation from this world, 
Those desires are like witches. And so there's, where is the question of actually enjoying the bliss of bhakti? Actually experiencing